Xavier Williams, and he's got it for a touchdown. I would say Colorado State would be a top 25 team. You know, they're, they're definitely good on all phases of the ball. You know, their offense is really well. You know, they move the ball really well. And their defense, you know, they don't really do a lot of uh, crazy things, but they, uh, they're they definitely good at what they do. So, you know, there's definitely a, that's, a, that's a definitely a good team on the other side tonight. This, this is a good team. I, I, I think this is probably a, a, as good as a team as Washington, Oregon State. Uh, if not better, so um, you know, we knew that going in. It's not, like, it's not like we didn't know that they're eight and one or seven and one, whatever it was, and uh, we knew we were coming up against a really good team. And uh, you know, I mean, watch, you know, Pac-12. You know, obviously they they've got some good sides, but I mean, the proofs in the pudding. They they played well. They've been playing well all year, and um, you know, we struggled today. The last time UH bucked the Rams was 1992. Last time Hawaii won in Fort Collins, 1988. Home team scored 22 points in defeat, most they've scored on the road this season. But Rainbow Warriors lost by their largest margin in 2014. 49 points allowed, 580 yards total offense surrendered. That's the most Hawaii's given up this season. And D. Hart's on the record as a sixth straight running back to hang 100 yards on the UH defense. High snap, give us to Hart. Hart with the patience, and he's got six. They're a good side. They beat us hands down. Um, yeah, we couldn't get the ball rolling on offense, and obviously their, their offense was rolling the whole day, and um, they run games obviously extremely good, and, and then they'd, uh, they'd gash us with, it with a nice pass, but um, yeah, it's another tough one. Our coaches called the right plays, man. We just, we just didn't execute. Uh, some, some people here and there, we just got to do a better job is you know, uh, as a whole unit, coming in and executing as a whole unit. Coaches have definitely put us in the right spot. We just got to come out better executing. And it's, it's always frustrating. We just, just got to do our jobs. We, we have a good game plan, you know, but at the end of the day, we, just don't, we didn't execute today. And uh, so, Coach just said, just keep plugging along, you know, keep fighting, and, uh, you know, don't give up. And I know none of the guys in our, in our locker room will give up. You know, we'll continue to fight until the last game. And we just got to, you know, watch film on Monday, you know, uh, just learn from our mistakes and just move on and focus on the San Jose State. And this play, Grayson to Charles Lovett, 71 yards in the third quarter. It's the fifth play covering at least 70 yards against the Rainbow Warriors this season. And it's the first time this season Hawaii's defense recorded zero sacks. We've got a 38-yard run by Hawaii QB Kaiko Wulzi and Scott Harding. Wow. He put on quite the show. Rainbow Warriors 0-10 on the road since joining the Mountain West Conference. Final score from Fort Collins, Hawaii losing 49-22. Rainbow Warriors now 2-8 overall, 1-4 in the MWC. Colorado State 9-1, 5-1 in the conference. Sure, there's a lot of questions. We'll ask some of them. I'm Robert Kekaula. This is Norm Chow, Inside Access, here at OC Sports. Can you not love that before the start of the game? That's Hawaii offensive lineman R.J. Hollis trying to get his team fired up. Welcome to Norm Chow Inside Access here in OC Sports. We're joined by UH head football coach Norm Chow. I love that stuff. The locker room <laughs> stuff if somebody goes nuts like that. I love it. Well, we, we thought we were ready to go, and, and we started out like we were ready to go, and then things just kind of crumbled after a while. Maybe, I, I don't know what's the proper term to use but football program right now mentally physically it's not in a good place is it well physically we're not I think these are resilient young men and uh, mentally I think we'll, we'll, we're gonna be okay um, I keep saying that and you keep hearing from them that they are they're resilient and they understand what needs to get done they play hard every week we just make so many crazy little mistakes that we just can't afford to do 
we heard Keiko Woozy, your quarterback, say the game plan was exactly what you had wanted in studying the game film and preparing for the Rams. It started off on a good note. Well, I think the coaches do a terrific job putting plans together. I mean, they, they work awfully hard late into the night, early in the morning, trying to put plans together. But, you know, obviously we have to execute and, and uh, do things right away. When you play a good team, the windows of opportunity are so small. You know, we, we got that fumble, had we picked up that fumble, then they threw a ball, went right through Jeremy Castro's hands, and Scotty was doing a great job of punting, you know, that got him down in, in, in uh, well, they went, got him on a four-yard line. They went 96 yards in the next, um, the next possession. So it's, a, it's important that we take advantage of those opportunities, and we didn't do it. We were, what, 7-5, I think. It should have been maybe 14-7 or whatever. Offensively, to start the football game, was a plan to try and throw the ball and get that defense out of the box and spread it out and loosen well, it up? Well, we did, and we eventually wanted to get to Joey, but we thought it would be good to move it around just a little bit and get the way we wanted to get started, and uh, it was okay. It worked out well. Joey, in fact, Joey's first ball he uh, was a throw, not a not a not a um, a run. So the offense with Ikaika Woolsey at quarterback. You had Joey Iosefa back. He missed a couple of games, the injury and the three-game suspension. The Kaika gets the touchdown pass to Scott Harding there. There's a couple of tricky, fancy stuff. You mentioned the Joey Iosefa. By the way, he looked good throwing a football. Remember, he came here as a quarterback. There were moments on offense, like this 38-yard run by Kaika Woozy late in the game where there were opportunities again for the offense to take advantage. Your quarterback, his number is 16 of 47, 192 yards, one touchdown pass. That's his ninth of the season. Also had a couple of INTs, two of them. That makes it eight in 2014. In order to win a game, you know, we need to score points too. You know, we can't just be out there, you know, taking the time on the clock and not punching into the end zone. So as you see, you know, in the first half, we didn't quite do that. But, you know, in the second half, I felt like we had pretty good drives of, uh, you know, scoring uh, pretty fast. But, uh, Obviously, we didn't score enough, and uh, injuries has definitely affected us all season. But you know that, that's not an excuse. You know we can't use that as an excuse for not being successful. Obviously, we don't want anyone to get hurt. But you know it's football. You know it's people are going to are going to go down and uh, get injured. So we just need people to step up behind them and uh, play like they're ones. You know, and uh, we definitely have depth at a lot of positions. So people are going to have to step up uh, this upcoming uh, next couple weeks. Mentions the injuries. We saw Stephen Lakalaka being helped on the sideline. Marcus Malapai looked a bit dinged up. What's the injury update in any of these kids? Well, it was tough coming home this afternoon, Robert, because those two guys are on crutches and could barely get up and off in an airplane. I think uh, Stephen really has a serious uh, hamstring muscle tear or pull or whatever. Uh, Marcus has probably done as well. Colorado State quarterback Garrett Grayson. If you look at the numbers, look at the history of the program, he's the top they've ever had. Touchdowns, completions, percentage, yardage. How good is Grayson? Well, I think he's an NFL guy. I really do. I, I um, you know, up until Jim, when Jim McElwain took it over, I, you know, it's, it's been a program that was kind of just kind of floundering around. But now with some real nice skilled people, you know, they didn't have their best. They didn't play their best receiver. And so, uh, Higgins. yeah, uh, 82. And so, you know, with, with Grayson, he, you knew he was going to cause some problems. And we, we probably had to get after him a little more than we did. But uh, we tried. I know, I know Kevin and the defensive guys were trying. So Grayson, 13 of 24, 278 yards, the four touchdowns. That's a bunch in one season for him. One of his big targets was Charles Lovett, a 5'8 senior. He had four catches for 134 yards and a touchdown, including the 171-yard reception I talked about earlier during, during the Open. That was a big play. Running backs, when Norm Chow inside access continues, Hawaii gets their running back back. Colorado State has a running back. Wow, he's yeah. pretty darn good. As we go to break here, we want to introduce you to our Super Cuts Cuts That Rock. It features number seven, Joey Iosefa, going up and over for a touchdown against Colorado State, landing on one of his own teammates in tight end, H-back, Dustin Vela. He felt it. Norm Chow, Inside Access on OC Sports continues after this. I don't think about those seniors because, uh, you know, 
They've uh, they left their heart out on this field every time they come out. You know they work hard, they grind, and this is their team. And, uh, and uh, obviously a senior year, you know you don't want to go out the way we're going out right now. So I'm just gonna take it upon myself to continue to get better, and I help my seniors send out send them out in a, in a, in a positive way. It's tough. You know, I'd love to get a few wins before before I finish up here in Hawaii, and uh, yeah, it's, it is tough. But I know I'm gonna play my heart out and, and um, put my put my body in the line wherever I need to, and um, you know hopefully the guys follow. And you know I know the seniors the seniors of the team they feel the same, and they're gonna you know put it down put it down as hard as they can for the last three games. Especially myself as a senior, uh, we just gotta. We're trying to lead these young guys, man. We're trying to lead them on a good, uh, good path for next year. Uh, we just got to do our jobs. Welcome back to Norm Chow Inside Access here in OC Sports. Over the years, we've talked, especially with this group. You have a special place reserved in your heart every year for the senior class. It's got to be breaking your heart that it can't get this turned around for them. It, it, it really is, Robert, because like I tell them all the time, this was still Coach Max recruits. You know, Bo Yap and Moses from the previous regime, they came, we changed, they changed coaches, who they bought in. You can see they're working real hard. They want to win. They deserve a chance to be successful, and just it tears your heart out. It really does. To see them after the game and to know how hard they worked, they're, 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 I just love these kids. They just give you every ounce of energy that they have, and we just, like I said, we, we have to quit making mistakes. Joey Iosefa, you get him back from the foot injury, the three-game suspension, running back, back in action. There are a couple of running backs in this football game that were pretty eye-opening, and you had mentioned Joey Iosefa's first touch was throwing a football. He looks pretty good at a 250-pound back rolling out and then throwing it. He did get 19 touches in the run game. Were you happy with what you saw? Uh, he was a little rusty, but, uh, you know, considering what he's been through, thought he did okay. He's such a, a emotional leader for us and, and worked so hard. And, and uh, you know, we didn't want to have him throw the ball because everyone was expecting the pass, and he did a nice job with it. It was uh, actually the second read. Now, Colorado State, <laughs> they answered with this young man. That's D. Hart. He's a transfer from Alabama who comes into the program with the new head coach, Jim McElwain, who was an assistant under Nick Saban at Alabama. And you get another ball carrier in Trey Geros. He gets two touchdowns. Their run game, pretty formidable. It really was. This is a, this is an SEC player, no question about it. He's, uh, he's got good quickness and, and uh, nice vision, and he sees what's going on. He's, a, he's an awfully good football player. D. Hart, just 5'9", 190 pounds, but oh boy, that's, he's got game. 11 carries, 115 yards, and the touchdown. Now for Hawaii, Joey Iosefa got 19 touches for 64 yards, one for one in the pass game. <laughs> it, it was good for 19 yards. Oh, it definitely, it definitely felt good to have Joey back. You know, he's, uh, he's definitely a, a big player to our offense. He's a senior, he's a leader, and uh, <clears> you know, he, did a, he, did a, he did a really good job tonight, but uh, you know, we just got to keep focusing on what we need to do. Now, I know you're not a social media guy. Not at all. But a lot of your players are social media friendly. This is from Scott Hardy, and you got to feel for this kid. This is what he wrote after the game. I just want to win. I can't go out like this. We heard the seniors talking. He was one of the seniors talking. As a coach, you got to love that. That's what he's thinking. I don't want to go out like this. Well, we have three more to go, and we've made up our minds after the game that we're going to work as hard as we've ever worked to try to end this thing on the right note. And, and like you say, those guys, Scotty does a, such a nice job, not only punting, but the, the punt returning and the receiving. You know, they were playing man coverage. We knew we could get a little bit off uh, uh, against the guy that was covering him, and, and he made a couple of nice plays. Uh, we just got, we just have to keep it rolling. We just got to keep going. We can't quit. We'll never quit. You know that. And uh, these guys, these young people will not quit either. In that punt game early, he gets one to go and stop at the two-yard line. Here he is on the punt return. This is for 15 yards. He also had a punt. The punt team stopped on the one-yard mm -hmm. line. Mm -hmm. Then he comes in the game, makes a couple of catches, including getting into the end zone for a, a touchdown from a Keiko Woolsey. And he talked about he's going to put whatever he's got, put his body on the line over the next few games to try and get yet another W. His numbers, six catches, 63 yards, a touchdown. That has a punt return yards, six punts in the game for an average of about 42 yards. That is a good day's work. 
getting matched up on the slot defender, Preston Hodges, and 29 inside wins. Ball's on time and on target, and 29 runs a nice route. Ball skills, and then gets it in the end zone. What an impressive athlete 29 I, is. I'm not sure I've had more fun watching a guy this year than Isn't watching that Scott the Hardy. Truth? I totally agree with that. Hunter, punt returner, wide receiver. I just had a, I guess it's called an option route, and uh, I felt good all day running that route, and, and especially on the guy I was running them against. And uh, yeah, I mean, I, yeah, ran a good route, and Akeka was patient enough and, and saw it, and uh, yeah, it was good. Whether that's punting or whether it's the punt return, try and you know help help the team out wherever I can, and <coughs> um, help the defense out uh, with field position, and then you know, hopefully give our, op our offense a, a good starting point to uh, start a drive. As a team, we've we've really struggled to take advantage of some good opportunities all year. Sometimes we do, sometimes we don't, and uh, you know, as a team, we we struggle we struggle to do that all year. Um, you know, whether that's a turnover or you know the fumble or something like that, or whether it's um, you know we can down it down it deep. I mean, at least tonight we got some points out of it and we got the safety, so that was that was good. And as good as his effort was, I, I do think it represents some of the shortcomings where there were field opportunity chances. You put Colorado State, and you couldn't capitalize and get those in. It's seven turnovers over that craziness rugby-style punt that those bounces have resulted for Hawaii. Mm -hmm. He has no idea what's going to happen to the ball when it bounces, does he? But but he knows exactly where to put it and how it will bounce, and that's from all obviously all those years of doing that. But I, there's not another guy. I, I don't think there's ever been a guy in college football that's a punter and a punt returner. Think about that one. Yeah, and a receiver. And, a receiver. and scoring touchdowns. <laughs> and a leader and a tremendous young man. This is not the kind of punting your great-great-grandfather would have taught you, <laughs> is it? <laughs> Though it isn't. And uh, above all of that, he's a heck of a young man. He's a guy that we're going to miss dearly. I, I would say he's one of those players you wish you could have back for another year. But your social security benefits don't cover <laughs> he's too old already that's a darn good kid scott harding norm chow inside access here on oc sports will continue after this time up that's all i'm gonna have if you put every single down this second half as hard as you can play i don't care what the score is in my mind we've got a great shot to come back we got a great shot to come back. But it's up to you. Each one of you, I want to see you play as hard as you can play this second half. Every single time, I want to see as hard as you can play. That's what I want to see. You understand? Yeah. Go! It's that tough. Yet again, it's that simple at the same time. Go out, lay it on the line. Represent the university, represent your families. Exactly right. That's the way it's supposed to be. What is the biggest concern that you have right now regarding your football team? Well, that we, we believe, that we, we feel like we can play. Um, there's enough plays out there that are being made that we need to remain positive. I think from what you hear that they are positive. I talked to them all on the plane this morning. Uh, they have to believe that we can get it done. And, you know, there's a part in our schedule where we have a shot to win these games, and uh, we need to go get it done. But uh, just, just making sure that they believe. You know, we, we've cut back on practice. It's that time of the year. Physically, they're, they're all beat up. Uh, I think it's the mental state that we're, we're dealing with right now. Now, I, I don't want to name names because these guys are just young men. But in the, in, in the order of rank of things that need to be improved right away, where does drop passes rank? <laughs> Between drop passes and missed tackles, we'll one Top and two. one A. Well, yeah. Because there were a couple a week ago, there were a couple against Colorado State, and it just takes the air out of any momentum you can get going. It, it really does. And, and you know, at Utah State, we did better. We made a big emphasis, and at Utah State, it was better. And then it, uh, it happened again for, for whatever reasons. Um, you know, lack of concentration, that's what uh, pass receiving is, and we just have to keep working at it. And after the game, Hawaii quarterback Keiko Woolsey talked about the situation where the air does come out of the balloon because of drop passes. It's, it's a little frustrating, but, I mean, the guys are out there, they're battling. You know, they're running great routes, and, uh, you know, obviously, as you see, not every ball was on the money tonight, so, I mean, they can't be making, you know, crazy catches, but, you know, I seem to be better just being accurate, you know, giving them the ball where they can make plays, and uh, there's some, some of them where I left it out there tonight, but, uh, you know, 
uh, with the receivers, even though you know maybe they are struggling right now, but they'll continue to work hard. You know, I love those guys, and I'll continue to put all my trust into them, and we'll just get better this uh, next coming week. Now, final statistics: Hawaii versus Colorado State. Rushing yards 293 for the Rams in the air 287 for Hawaii 141 yards rushing 211 yards passing third down conversions UH 10 for 21 Colorado State 8 for 13 and the turnovers there you see it's in favor of Colorado State by a 3 to 1 margin before That's we go to break defense can it be fixed can it be turned around it's been a stretch of three not so good outings in a row against some very good running backs. I, yeah, I do. I believe. I, I'm a firm believer in Kevin Clune and Kurt Govea and Durante Jones and Lewis and the rest of them. I, I think we can, and I guarantee you they're working at it right now as we speak. When we come back on Norm Chow Inside Access, there's one Rainbow Warrior football player who's got some hidden talent. We'll check it out after this time out. Welcome back to Norm Chow Inside Access here on OC Sports. We're joined now by Stephen Sai from the Star Advertiser. The blog is? It's at Hawaii Warrior World. I'm not really sure what the whole thing is, but if you go to hawaiiwarriorworld.com, I can't say it. You'll link somewhere. You'll see a lot of other fine ones like Cindy Lewis and Dave Reardon. Dude, you don't have to plug everybody. Well, hey. <laughs> so you're just back from Fort Collins, from the Denver area. Cam Duran. Or Ralphie the Buffalo. Who's got the better mascot? Oh, I think Cam the Ram is really good because you know why? When Cam the Ram performs, it doesn't leave some traces of, you know. It's not a things. billy goat. It's actually a Cam the Ram. It is. And you like Cam the Ram better than Ralphie? Well, I like the energy and the, the strength that Ralphie brings, but he also leaves a little other things behind. And you have a theory as to why the name Cam? I, I believe... Colorado State used to be known as Colorado a and which I think would be an C acronym, C-A-M. I, I could be wrong, I could, it, but I guess, you know, CASU wouldn't work, right, <laughs> CSU? So, let me ask you, the burden of 17 straight road losses, the burden of 20 straight losses on national TV, that's a tough load to carry on your shoulders. It is, and, and, I, and you can't really be responsible for everything that has happened in the past, and I, I kind of like... Colorado State's um, um, the way they approach games. They consider every game uh, a season. So they, every game is like zero and zero. You enter 0 and 0. And so after the game, they were chanting that they're 1 and 0. And I thought that's kind of a nice way to look at things that, you know, you can't be responsible for whatever happened years and years you know, past because that's not this team. So, um, you know, they approach it one game at a time, really. And I think that really helps them. What we were watching was the last time Hawaii won on the road, October. 2011, a 16-14 win against Idaho. The pressure of carrying the weight on their shoulder. Are you seeing a sideline of young men that are enjoying themselves playing college football? Important question. No, I think I think there's a lot of stress and there's a lot of things, not just um, to end streaks, but to win games and make plays. And it just seems like they just need to enjoy it because football is fun and. The off season, that's hard work. Getting up early, lifting, running the gasters, that's hard work. This should be the fun time. And no matter what the record, you know, there are so few games they should just go out and have fun. In the locker room after the game, what do you see? Are you seeing anger, ticked off, depressed? What is it? Sort of a mixture of it's like the, what the five stages of grief. I mean, there's just so many different things to go through. But I think anger and mostly anger at themselves. And that's kind of unfortunate to me because you just you play hard. Whatever happens, happens. And I think they are feeling just a little bit more responsible, not just for themselves, because they always say they're not just playing for themselves. They're playing for their families, they're playing for the state and everything. It just seems like that burden is just a little bit too much. And really, they should just be playing the game, having fun, and whatever happens, happens. So this week, your size matters feature. Somebody's mom ratted them out. Oh, yeah. And we took it and ran with it. We were in San Diego. Bo Riley's mom uh, saying that she had heard that uh, her son had won a, um, I guess it was a, a rap contest. So it was for talent night. And he won the, uh, the rap off. And then she says, but wait, you got to see YouTube. That's even better. And then from there, yeah, she, she gave him up. So you found Bo Riley performing on YouTube. That's this week's segment on Size Matters. How did you get to be so entertaining? 
Yeah, uh, I mean, growing up, there's we, my family has films of me growing up and just kind of being a spaz sometimes, you know, when you, whenever music's on. And then going into my freshman year, um, I met a couple buddies. In fact, I don't know if you guys know Sean Salisbury, but his uh, his sons, we, we became good friends, and they were kind of they were characters, and they were dancing all the time to weird, with weird moves. And I kind of, you know, grabbed some of that and became kind of a weird dancing guy at my school and. People wanted me to do the talent contest, and I did, and uh, we won it three years in a row. So it was kind of caught on and kind of known for it, I guess, a little bit in my town. <laughs> How'd you learn to moonwalk? Well, I'd always, you know, did a little bit of it growing up just because, uh, you know, me and my friends, we kind of thought it was cool. But then the year that Michael Jackson died, I think it was my sophomore, junior year, I, uh, his music video, I think I don't think there was a channel where his music videos weren't playing. So I was just watching it and then kind of, I didn't practice it, but every party, whatever, dance thing, whatever, I was always working at it and came to be okay at it. I'm not a pro at it, but I was okay. I managed. <laughs> a wedding dance is supposed to be a very special thing. What was your wedding dance? Well, my buddies were always calling me, you know, a few weeks before saying, what are you going to do? What should we do? And whatever. But I just left it up to my wife, you know, because it's her day. It's our day, but, you know, it's, it's her special day. And uh, we just did something together. And then, but when, it, when the DJ was on, we were you know, free dancing. It was it was a great time to that right now. We were going crazy. Who do you listen to? What type of music? I listen to everything. I listen to everything. Um, I grew up with a dad who was obsessed with the classic 60s, 70s, 80s rock, classic rock. But I'll, I'll listen to anything, though. Yes, a small town girl Living in a lonely world She took the midnight train girl That's pretty good. I think if the replacement for the guy who replaced the original Journey guy ever goes, that's your replacement for the replacement. So he actually has fun doing this stuff, oh, right? Oh, yeah, he does. He's, he's great. He's a, yeah, he's very entertaining. And he won talent show during fall camp this season with the U.S. football team. Bo Riley, the feature of this week's Size Matters. Steven Sai, thank you for joining us here at Norm Chow Inside Access on OC Sports. Here's some scores from, from very familiar football teams. Washington Huskies lost to 18th ranked UCLA 44-30. Oregon State lost to Washington State 39-32 this week in Northern Iowa. They pick up a win against North Dakota State ranked number one at their division 23-3. Arizona 38-20 over Colorado. Rice took out UT San Antonio by 10. Utah State with the win against Wyoming. Final score there was 20-3. Elsewhere around the MWC, San Diego State over Idaho, Air Force big over UNLV, and Fresno State next on the Hawaii schedule. They lost to the Bulldogs of Fresno State 38 to 24. Standings now, first the West Division of the Mountain West Conference. Nevada on top, three and two, tied with San Diego State. Fresno State right behind at three and three. Then it's the Spartans, Hawaii at one and four, Rebels at one and five. In the Mountain Division, of the MWC. There you see Colorado State ranked 23 in this week's AP poll that came out yesterday. 9-1 overall, 5-1 in conference. Right behind them, Boise State, Utah State, Air Force, Wyoming at 2-4. Lobos gave Boise State a good game for a little bit. They fall to 1-4 in conference. And as a schedule for Hawaii, you see how it started, how it's gone against Colorado, Rice, Wyoming, San Diego State. And the second part of the schedule, things didn't change very much as it goes along. And up next, after Nevada, after Utah State, after Colorado State, Hawaii's got San Jose State back-to-back -back on the road. Hawaii takes off this week to play in California. The vision you had for University of Hawaii football when you first got here, compared to the reality of where it is right now, I I'm sure you're not happy where the program is. Can you get it to where you want it to be? I believe so. You know, will we, will we, can we make it work? Yeah, I, 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 think, 
I think so. I think things are in place now. The you know the the the, the staff and the the, uh, the things outside of football. But we have to obviously we have to win some games. I think ultimately coaches are measured by wins and losses. You can talk. Administrators can talk about APR scores and GPA scores. Ultimately, it's wins and losses. We understand that. We, uh, we just have to keep trying. The recruiting effort, and I, and I must say this: the recruiting effort since you've been here is vast improved to what Hawaii fans are familiar with. How tough is it going to be to continue to recruit without the W's? I, I don't think that's that's a it's an issue at all. People go to schools for different reasons. You know, Max Wittig is sitting there. He came for for whatever reasons. Why? And it is a recruiting key is to find out why they want it, they choose the schools that they do. You know, locally it's hard because people want to get away, and we try it. We try like heck. We are our recruiting efforts are tremendous. Every single day we work at it. I think that's the lifeline of what college football is all about. You have a. Uh, what was that vision when you first took the job as head coach? Where did you want to take this program? Well, you know, Robert, to be right honest, as I sat there and watched Colorado State, I wanted to be like them. I want us to be like them. They, they, they like we talked about it earlier. They wear coat and ties to breakfast. They're like Nick Saban because they came from Alabama. They dress properly. They act properly. They play properly. They, they discipline in what they do. There was a game with very few penalties. And I, that's what I'd like to be like. So I've always envisioned that uh, the, to be part of a team that that played like that. Style-wise, as well, the way the way they play, you sure. like that style of football? Sure, I do. You know, run the ball, pound the football, and and then the play action passes and the deep balls come. And, and the outcome is, you see a quarterback like Gary Grayson, he didn't throw very much, but when they do throw the football. It seems people are just wide open. Yeah, because we've had to, we had to defend the run, and we were up, you know, up in the box trying to stop the run, and they made some nice calls, and uh, you know, we didn't stop the run, and then when the, when we couldn't do that, the, the passing game obviously was wide open. No lack of effort for the coaches as well. It, it's been a grind, <laughs> top to bottom, coaches, equipment, trainers, players. Everybody, it's been a grind. It, it 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 has, but that's what we choose. That's what we that's what we choose to do. And I, I will always be grateful for the auxiliary personnel, the the equipment guys, and the trainers. Everything is shorthanded. You know, everybody travels with more. Everybody does more. But you don't ever hear people complaining. They work at it. They work hard at it. And I'm 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 I'm, I'm just real proud to be associated with them. This week's plans: you depart for California to take on. San Jose State win Wednesday or Thursday? Thursday. We'll go Thursday like we always do and get in late Thursday night, go to bed and get up Friday and, and, and get ready to go. Coach, good luck this week on the road in the Mountain West Conference yet again. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Robert. For Coach Chow, for our entire crew here, thank you for watching. Norm Chow, Inside Access, here in OC Sports. She likes people. Norm Chow, Inside Access, has been sponsored by Bank of Hawaii, Chevron, and Hawaii Honda Dealers. That monkey on their back? Ooh, it's now a full-blown gorilla. UH football team now lost 17 in a row on the road. That's the longest ski in the nation right now. 10 in a row in the Mountain West Conference and 20 straight on national TV. Now, the expectations to be better, much better. Reality says 2014 continues to be a struggle. Right now, it's, it's tough right now. You know, guys guys, guys want to, you know, it's, it's hard right now. It's, it's not easy. We always say we play for each other and, and obviously the coaching staff, you know, because uh, week in and week out, you know, they, uh, they put in a, a game plans for us to execute and they never give up on us and they, and they work trem tremendously hard every week. 
So uh, we know that you know our, a lot of things are at stake right now, especially with the unsuccessful season we're having right now. And uh, we just need to get better and uh, continue to fight for those guys because they've been fighting for us all season. Here's Hart. He breaks free, stumbles, gets his momentum back. And Hart drags the tackler inside the Hawaii 25-yard line, a gain of 43. Rainbow Warriors ran into a Colorado State football team that may be having the best season in school history. Rams riding an eight-game win streak. Garrett Grayson, the top quarterback ever to represent the CSU, he threw four touchdown passes. That's a school record 26 this season. Grayson throwing for the end zone, and Xavier Williams, and he's got it for a touchdown. I would say Colorado State would be a top 25 team. You know, they're, they're definitely good on all phases of the ball. You know, their offense is really well. You know, they move the ball really well. And their defense, you know, they don't really do a lot of uh, crazy things, but they, uh, they're definitely good at what they do. So, you know, there's definitely a, that's, a, that's a definitely a good team on the other side tonight. This, this is a good team. I, I, I think this is probably a, a, as good as a team as Washington, Oregon State. Uh, if not better, so um, you know, we knew that going in. It's not, like, it's not like we didn't know that. They're eight and one or seven and one, whatever it was, and uh, we knew we were coming up against a really good team. And uh, you know, I mean, watch, you know, Pac-12. You know, obviously they're, they've got some good sides, but I mean, the proof's in the pudding. They, they played well. They've been playing well all year, and um, you know, we struggled today. The last.